So you're one of two people. You just had a baby and you want to get back into your fitness routine. Maybe you had one before, maybe you just started to help with having a kid, or you're the kind of person who's waiting until after you have a kid to realize, holy crap, I'm in terrible shape and I've got an energizer bunny for a child and I need to be in better shape so that I can actually enjoy the time that I spent with that kid. Regardless of who you are today, we're going to be talking about how to get fit after having a baby. Let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. We're going to kick off this episode by me telling you that if you are sleep deprived, what I'm about to say is more for the people that haven't yet have a, had a kid because you don't, you haven't experienced it yet. And that is you are going to be very sleep deprived. There are going to be nights where maybe you get two hours of sleep. And if you're the mom in the relationship, you probably didn't sleep at all, which is going to make trying to work out virtually impossible. And I will just admit upfront that due to the amount of sleep deprivation that I experienced, which I don't believe was as bad as my wife's, I didn't work out for two years. I tried. I tried to get into a fitness routine. My daughter has this weird thing where she likes to wake up at 4 a.m. sometimes and more more often 5 a.m., which would be right when I would be working out. So I could have worked out at night after she went to bed around 6.37, but I didn't sleep at all the night before. There were nights where I would go to bed at the same time as my daughter. Sometimes that was 6 p.m., so that's the first hurdle you're going to come, you know, come to. And if you're at the point where you're so sleep deprived that you're laughing at the idea of a workout, it's not time to start working out. Honestly, I know it's a weird way to start this episode off, but that's 100% what you should do. Like you should not work out. I would actually recommend if you're able to, I would recommend doing things like walking, you know, walk with your 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 kid, you know, whatever you end up having, go on walks, like getting movement of any kind would probably be best. Like you don't want to be a couch potato because even zombies can, you know, walk around. So if you're going to do anything, walk. And then when you get to a point where your kid is sleeping, you know, at least somewhat through the night, and maybe instead of only getting two hours of sleep, you're getting like five or six, then maybe we can start visiting the idea of doing more intense workouts. And not to get too far into this, but you have to remember that your body is absorbs all kinds of stress. And if there isn't an equal amount of recovery, you're going to be under a lot more stress, whether you feel it or not. I remember being so sleep deprived. There were some times where I just didn't even realize how sleep deprived I was until I went to bed and I knocked out instantly. Like I had hit the pillow just out. So depending on what you're experiencing, you have to sort of play the I can only work out as intensely as I have recovered. And that's a good rule of thumb, whether you've had a kid or not, is that your workout intensity should match your ability to sleep, your ability to recover, your ability to you know get proper nutrition, because eating right is part of recovery, right? You- you're not going to recover that well eating, you know, an entire pizza you know, that night or six slices of pizza, whatever it might be. Your nutrition has to be, you know, for recovery too. So these are all things that are very hard to do when you've just had a kid. And, and if you've just had a kid like yesterday or within the last week or two, I would recommend not even listening to this podcast anymore until this episode specifically, until you're at a point where you can actually start working out again, because it might just make you mad that you aren't able to do these things. Or maybe you're smarter than I am and you're willing to start learning about this now so that when you aren't sleep deprived, you can work out and you'll have all the plans prepped. That's the more intelligent thing to do. So props to you. Okay. So what are some other things to consider? I I took some notes for this episode um, because I I was in the middle of all of this stuff not too long ago. And I was like, you know what would be good? Let's take some notes for this. So um, on the mindset set of things, reset your expectations. If you had a fitness routine before you had a kid, it's not going to look anything like it did before. It's probably going to look like a fraction of that. And if you've never worked out or this is your first time getting into like a healthy routine, you have the advantage of not having any expectations. So props to you. That's maybe the only advantage of waiting this long to work out. So yeah, there's that. If you do have a history of working out and you know, you're know you getting back on the swing of things, start with a clean slate. Consider this life a completely different one than the one you had in the past. Any sort of you know workout consistency that you had, any sort of roadblocks that 
weren't getting in your way are now going to get in your way. And there are going to be times where you have to just make the adjustments uh, to your workouts in order to get things done and, and still be able to get it done. It is going to be harder now that you have a little independent person who loves you, adores you, and relies on you. It's going to be a lot harder to figure out time to work out, especially if you're the kind of person that isn't remote uh, working, who has to travel to and from work, who has a typical eight-hour day. If you're that kind of person, then it's going to get exponentially harder. If you work from home or you have a shortened, you know, work day, it's it's not going to be that hard. I mean, ideally, you'd be able to sleep for two hours and work out for an hour, and that would make up the other three hours that you would be at work. But my point is, is that things are only going to get harder. And the best thing for you to do is to consider the the easiest thing to do for exercise as a win. So this is where I got really messed up. I used to do like very dedicated workout programs that, and I had a full gym at my disposal because I was work. I worked there. I had it made. Like I had the most ideal conditions you could probably have. And I think this is actually the mistake that a lot of personal trainers make. I've made this mistake plenty of times is thinking that you're, you know, not being able to relate to your clients in that way. You have a totally different lifestyle as a trainer. So trying to impose your own routine on somebody who has to spend eight hours a day at a desk or doing some, you know, hopefully doing some sort of work they enjoy or doing very laborious work, get out of here. It's, you're not going to be able to relate to that person at all. And to think that you would is just asinine. But my point is, is that you, you kind of have to just change your perspective. And now that you have a kid, life's going to get, you know, more challenging on the workout and health end, because you're basically sacrificing everything that you used to do for yourself for time for that child, whether it's attention or feeding or, you know, consoling if they're, you know, upset or just spending time with them, you know, for the longest time, one of the reasons why I didn't work out at night is because that was the only time I got to spend with my daughter. And so I'm like, I'm not going to go do a workout in my garage over, you know, spending time playing, you know, coloring with her or watching a show or whatever. It's just, it's, it won't be worth it in the end. And that was a big roadblock that I had to overcome. So anyway, that's one thing. If you have any sort of workout routine or any sort of semblance of fitness before you had a kid and now you have a kid and you're out of shape and you want to get back in shape, one of the notes that I took down was combat shame and judgment of yourself with an understanding that this is a new and completely different life. So that's a personal thing that I went through is that I felt very shameful for how I'd let myself get out of shape. I was ashamed at the fact that I wasn't able to meet the same fitness goals as before. And as I started working out more and more this year, because I started this this journey about two and a half, three weeks ago, beginning of, or I think it was the first or second week of January. And I went through a lot of that. I was working out like, holy crap, dude, you used to do twice as much weight on, on, you know, squat or bench press or deadlift or whatever. And I had to slowly sort of encourage myself to understand that just getting it done, regardless of what the weight was, the reps was, the time, just doing something was good for me. And I started to actually feel those effects. I'm just getting in the gym and moving felt good. Going for a walk felt good. I'm, you know, doing a, a quick 10 minute hit session felt good, but it's no near, nowhere near where I used to be from a fitness level. And I kept comparing my old self to my new self. And then one day, I think it was in the middle of, of a bench press, I got done and I just had this kind of like thought or epiphany that said, I live a completely different life. Why am I using anything that happened beforehand as a, as a ruler for my success? That doesn't make any sense. Like I need a whole new plan, a whole new, you know, goal setting system, a whole new understanding and, and empathy to be completely honest with what I'm doing now versus what I used to do. So that's one thing to keep in uh, in mind. Uh, the next thing that I, I wrote down was listen to your body cues. And I think this is so much more important with somebody who is sleep deprived and, and I won't say malnourished because you're, you're not in a, you know, you're not starving yourself, but you're probably not at the peak of your nutrition and you're probably not even in a great place with your nutrition. So, you know, when your nutrition isn't that great, when your sleep is not that great, your exercises are going to be a lot harder and they're not going to be as efficient as, as they could be. So that's one of the things that you have to realize when you're, when you're going into that is that you, you, if your body's telling, you no, you should probably stop. And that's not you being weak. That's not you being a, a baby. That's not you being, uh, you know, uh, not efficient. That's you being smart because your ego, is the one that's telling you, oh, you should be doing this or you should be doing that. Uh, and your ego can get you hurt, can get you injured a lot of times because it's a it's a pompous ass half the time, especially when it comes to things like, oh, you should have done this and, you know, being the judge of your, you know, your life 
and maybe not everyone has that more power to you. But if you're someone like me who constantly has this like David Goggins type vocabulary and 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 conversation in your head, then uh, yeah, you you probably have that going on, and and you have to learn how to talk back to that. And that's that's an effective strategy too. Is when you have these negative thoughts or these judgmental thoughts of that are unreasonable, but you've been listening to them for so long that you kind of, you know, you take their advice sometimes. I mean, maybe it's served you well in your past, which is another hard thing to part with because it's like, oh, well, this used to serve me really well. And now it's not really serving me that well. So, you know, you have to be able to talk back to it and understand like, hey, I just can't, uh, I can't think like that and, and operate like that anymore. The next thing that's really important is focus on building momentum and consistency. And they they go hand in hand. Being consistent doesn't mean being perfect, but it does mean if you're going to set goals for yourself, like how many workouts a week you're going to do, or, you know, the types of foods that you're going to try to eat more of, like the healthier ones, if that's your goal, then find the best way to stay consistent with that. Because the most powerful and not talked about thing in, in health and fitness is momentum. So one of the hardest things to do is climb back out of the trench of not working out for a long time and get back into a routine. And that's because you have no momentum going. What's the hardest part of pushing a car? It's when the car is stalled. But once the car gets moving, it gets easier. That's how you kind of have to think about it. So setting too lofty a goal, or there's even clients that I've worked with who we don't set any goals other than, hey, show up to your training session with me. That's your only priority. If you can do that, then we're good. And then as they get good at that, then I say, okay, you've done really awesome with this. You've been super consistent. Um, Let's add one more thing. Can we eat, you know, I've noticed that your nutrition isn't the greatest. What if we added, you know, you you tend to love breakfast. Let's add more protein to breakfast. That's your next goal. That's the only thing that you're going to do other than showing up with me. And what you do is you make it so easy to be consistent that building momentum is is actually really easy to do. When you're a new parent, the you're going to rely on consistency a lot. It's not going to be easy, but the momentum that you build from that is going to carry you into the next workout, into the next meal, into the next anything. And hopefully it's what helps you stay consistent when things get crazy with your kid. You know, just recently there was a workout that I wanted to do that ended up getting cut short because my daughter woke up early from her nap. And so be it. But I still did what I could in the time that I was given. And that was the only thing that mattered to me. If you would have talked to Shane, you know, four years ago, that would have been a failure of a workout. Talking to me now, I was just happy enough to get out there, get moving for the amount of time that I had available. When you start viewing it through that lens and you start realizing that the only thing you have to do is keep momentum, it gets a lot easier. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's easier than it was before. And that's what's most important. The next thing I wrote down is remember, this is a lifelong journey, right? If you took some time off when you had a kid, it's not the end of the world. I took two years off. I still got back into my routine after only about three weeks. And when you have a kid, being perfect is even harder to do because there's going to be so many more ways in which you can fail. There's going to be so many ways in which you're going to be interrupted, that that things are going to get changed, that plans are going to get moved around. And so if you can just remember that while you might have missed that workout, but you have plenty of time to do the next workout, you're going to be fine. View it in a very macro level, right? You're just trying to improve your life right now. This isn't a good time to try to lose body fat. This isn't a good time to join a weightlifting competition. This isn't a good time to train for a triathlon. This is a good time to just be a dad or a mom and be able to just try to survive because that's really what you're doing. When you have a kid and you're a new parent, maybe like we are, surviving is like all you got. Like that's all you can really hang your hat on is like, yep, I'm just surviving right now. That's the kind of fitness routine that you want. You want something that's just going to help you, you know, weather the the course, weather the, 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 the storm, so to speak. Um, you're not trying to do any crazy stuff right now. You're just trying to prevent yourself from losing any more, you know, time and, and consistency with your nutrition or, or your exercise plan. The next thing I recommend is prioritizing short workouts. Typically, these are your high-intensity interval training workouts. There's plenty of ones that you can find for free online. Just type in 15, you know, free 15-minute HIT workout and, you know, follow those, um, provided it's by, you know, a reasonable source, not some crazy, you know, CrossFit athlete who has no idea who he's making his program for. Um, but my point is, is that if you prioritize short 10, 15, 20-minute workouts, even though they're still 
a large possibility you won't be able to do that if your kid wakes up or something happens, it gives you the most likely chance to complete that workout. And not only complete that workout, but do something that's intense enough to get your heart rate going, to get your blood flowing, to actually do something for you. Going back to the sleep deprivation thing, it's kind of a dangerous act to do in workouts that are too intense. So what I would do is if you have any workout experience and you look up a HIIT workout online, dial it back like 30% because they're probably going to try to push it to the max. If you dial it back 30%, you know, maybe they want you to work out, you know, do an exercise for 20 seconds and only rest for 10. Don't recommend that. In the very beginning of, of HIIT training or as, as a sleep deprived parent, what you should do is work out for 15 to 20 seconds. So do some sort of exercise for that amount of time and then rest double that time. So if you did 15 seconds of work, rest for 30. It's going to feel like a long time to rest, especially if you used to do this in the past and you were just like like a ninja going, you know, a thousand miles an hour. But trust me, that extra recovery is going to make it so that when your kid needs you, you're not falling asleep, collapsed on the floor, right? Again, remember, we're just trying to do something to help us maintain any level of health, if not slightly improve it. We're not out here trying to run marathons right now. All right, this last tip is about nutrition. I'm a big proponent of finding healthy, ready to eat or heat and eat meals. So some of my favorites, and I think that they've done a really good job over the years of making these a little bit more well-rounded and not just kind of boring and whatever, is lean cuisines, or I think there's another one called like healthy balance. You'll you'll recognize it when you see it. If you just type in like healthy throws and meals on Google, you'll see some brands. I don't remember them because I don't eat them that much anymore. But that's what I would do when I was in a pinch. Like when I was super busy, I would just buy five of those. And yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than doing it yourself, but you're also a parent now and you're also, you know, working and you've got pretty much no time to cook. Let's just be real. Like let's stop, you know, trying to be the person who's like, oh yeah, no, I, I cook all my own food. Great, buddy. We don't care. I've got an infant that's, you know, drinking milk from my tits right now. I don't give a, a fuck what you're doing with your, with your, your, your perfect, you know, plan. Like the, life is different from me. Okay. And I need to do what works for me. And so that's what you have to do. And if it means it not being the, the healthiest thing, but it's like calorie controlled and it's a meal that you can make in, you know, four minutes, do it. This is a time in your life where again, you're surviving. I mean, I'm not saying you can't do this if you aren't a parent, but I, I am saying that utilizing the modern food system, especially the convenient modern food system to your advantage while also trying to eat in a healthier way or foods that have, you know, that are calorie controlled and that have hopefully have, you know, more vegetables in them and more protein. There's nothing more you could ask for at a time like this. Like utilize, lean into that, use that to your advantage. Don't shy away from it because it's, you know, something that you might think is like, oh, well, it's a frozen healthy meal. How healthy can it be? You'd be surprised. Like a lot of these meals, I'm sure that you could survive on them if you had to. And you would, you know, maybe somebody should do that. Maybe I'll do that. You know, I'll just eat healthy frozen meals for 30 days and see how much fat I lose. I don't know. My point is, is that you want to utilize uh, things that are going to be easy for you and not feel the pressure to like meal prep your own food or hell, you could even go, you know, if you have the, the funds for it and you don't mind budgeting for it, you could go to, you know, restaurants that have healthier options and you could eat those foods. Um, you could do fast foods that have healthier options, you know, places like, uh, what's a good place like a uh, flame broiler, right? You could eat that, you know, provided the calories are, are fall within what you need, so to speak. You could do that. That would be no big deal at all. You get veggies, you get protein, and you get a carb. You get rice. Well, it's like a perfect meal. So yeah, just realizing that and trying to utilize that and not feeling bad for doing that, I think that can really help you out. So that's the end of today's episode. If you're a parent or a soon-to-be parent and you want to talk with me or there's anything I can do to help you, this is my new era. This is the new era that I'm in. I My daughter turns uh, two in, I think, three days. So I'm, I'm living this right now. And if there's anything I can do to give you perspective based on my experience as a coach, as somebody who's been a fitness enthusiast for 19 years, um, as a new parent, I'm more than happy to help. In fact, that's exactly the kind of people that I'm, you know, trying to help more of because I think that there's a, a great need for that. So whether you're a mom or a dad, reach out. Uh, the best place to reach out is on social media. Instagram is my, uh, probably the best place to contact me because it's super easy. I don't even think you can send messages on YouTube, but those are the two places that I'm most active active is Instagram and YouTube at Shane Hubbard fit is my handle. Just type that in the bar. You'll see my head with like a orange background and some other fun things I did with graphic design. Yeah. And just reach out to me, whether you've talked to me before or never talked to me in your life, I'd be more than happy to help you out. So anyway, that's today's episode. Thanks a ton for tuning in and I will see you in the next episode. 
Two episodes in a day, bitch. Let's go. All right. What was that, like 10 minutes? 20 minutes? Holy shit. I didn't even realize I talked that long.